Hello everyone, I'm Emma, and I'm your storyteller for today. Tonight's chapter is from the Crickle the Crocodile series, and this is chapter four, Crickle and Henry. It was a hot sunny day along the river, and Crickle was glad of her mud burrow. She'd had quite enough sun for one day, and she needed the coolness of the mud on her skin. She wriggled in until she was comfy. Ah, that's better, she thought, and she closed her eyes as she felt her skin cool. Now she was ready for her afternoon nap. Crickle yawned, <sighs> wriggled her toes, and closed her eyes, feeling cool and relaxed. However, she hadn't been asleep long when a most strange and awful sound woke her. It wasn't a sound she had ever heard before. In fact, it wasn't even a sound she had heard anything like before. It was a sort of <coughs> sound. A sound of someone or something in what must have been the most tremendous pain. Crickle was fully awake now and out of her burrow for she wanted to know what on earth was going on and whether she could help. The sound was making its way closer and so Crickle felt sure the source would soon be in sight. There it was again, except this time it was more of a Ouch! Oh dear, thought Crickle. Someone is definitely in a great deal of pain. And as she looked, she could see what appeared to be her friend, Henry the Hippo, although he didn't look his usual hippo self. In fact, had it not been for the fact that Crickle knew Henry so well, she might have had quite a fright, as along he came with his huge mouth open so wide he looked quite frightening indeed, even to a crocodile. Oh, Henry! shouted Crickle. Is that you? What on earth has happened to you? Henry caught Crickle's gaze and made his way towards her, still holding his mouth open wide as it could be. It was so wide, in fact, that he couldn't even speak to Crickle. All that came out was a muddled mess and no actual words at all. Oh, Henry, come, let me see, said Crickle, and she tried to take a closer look into Henry's mouth, but as soon as she got anywhere near, he withdrew sharply away. Henry, I'm not going to hurt you, said Crickle. All I want to do is take a look. You're clearly in quite enough pain as it is. I'm certainly not intending to make it any worse. Henry looked sorrowfully up at her and slowly he allowed Crickle to get close enough to take a look inside. Oh, Henry, I see, said Crickle. You, my dear boy, have a rather nasty rotten tooth and it is no doubt what is causing you such enormous pain. As she said this, a small tear made its way from Henry's eye. Now there, now, now, now there, old boy, don't fret. I will fix this. Of that you have my word. I can't leave you like this now, can I? And with that, Crickle sat back on the river bank, scratched her head, and thought about what she could do. It was clear Henry wasn't going to let her touch his tooth, that it was too painful, but she had to get the tooth out. So what was the solution? Crickle wasn't sure. She knew sometimes she found it easy to think when she swam, and so she explained to Henry that she needed some thinking time, and he was to wait for her here. He wasn't planning on moving anywhere, and he just nodded, and lay on the bank, holding his jaw. Crickle slipped into the water and drifted downstream. As she did, she saw some of the birds she regularly heard singing their songs in the morning. Hello, Crickle, they tweeted. Crickle waved by reply. The birds were her regular early morning friends, she would always leave out her leftovers for them after breakfast, so they always had easy pickings from, from Crickle. She pondered whether the birds might know of a solution. After all, they flew all over the place, so perhaps they had seen something similar before, and they would be able to give her a clue. I say, said Crickle to one of the birds, I don't suppose you know anything about how I can help Henry the Hippo, do you? He has such terrible toothache, and I cannot think of how I can help him. Ooh, toothache's not good, said one of the birds. Oh no, thank goodness we only had beaks, said another. I've heard it's so bad it's like someone drilling a, droll in, a hole in your head, said a third. Yes, well I think Henry would agree with that right about now, said Crickle. Poor fellow, I just don't understand how he let his teeth get so bad in the first place. Probably didn't keep them clean, said one of the birds. It's a common problem. Bits of food get stuck and are left over after they eat, and if they don't clean it, it can go rotten and rot the tooth. 
Lucky for us, we like leftovers, said another one of the birds. We basically like the things no one else wants, said one of the birds. Take ticks, for example. Do you like having ticks, Crickle? Well, no, said Crickle. I find them intensely annoying. They itch and sometimes they drive me wild. And can you scratch them off yourself, said another bird. I wish I could, said Crickle, but I could never reach them. So that's where we can help, said one of the birds. We eat leftovers, the things you don't want, and that includes ticks. They're tasty to us and make a good snack if you get enough of them. Would you like us to get rid of yours, said another. Just promise you won't eat us, and we will. That's the deal, you see. You know, so we're safe in that. Sounds like a fair deal to me, said Crickle. I promise not to eat you. And she rose towards the surface of the water, so the birds could land on her back and peck away at her pesky ticks. After only a couple of moments, the birds were finished and Crickle felt wonderful to be tick-free. No more annoying itchy pests attached to her. Well, I've learned something, she said. I had no idea you liked ticks. And now I do, I'll most definitely ask you to remove mine more often. Absolutely, our pleasure, tweeted the birds in reply. Do you eat anything else? Aside from ticks, I mean, asked Crickle. Well, yes, we're happy with anything, really. Like we said, we like all leftovers, and that pretty much includes anything. This gave Crickle an idea. Would you consider even leftovers that were inside a mouth, she said. Well, that would depend on the mouth, but as long as they made the same deal not to eat us, I don't see why not. What do you have in mind? said one of the birds. Crickle explained her plan and asked the birds to follow her back to find poor Henry. When they returned, Henry was just as Crickle had left him and in just as much pain, if not more. He was clutching at his cheek and his face was swollen on one side. Henry, I have an idea that can fix this for you, but we're going to need some help and so I've brought reinforcements. And she nodded to the birds who had flown with her. I'm sorry, said Crickle, looking up at the birds. I feel dreadfully rude asking you this, but I don't know what sort of birds you are, and I feel I ought to introduce you properly. Oh, that's all right, said one of them. We're ox peckers, said another, because we also pick the ticks off the ox. I see, said Crickle. Henry, these ox pecker birds are here to help. All you have to do is promise not to eat them and open your mouth so they can look inside. Henry motioned that he could not talk, and so Crickle spoke on his behalf. Henry is in too much pain to say this, but you agree not to eat the birds, she queried. Not if you agree, Henry, to which Henry nodded. Henry doesn't eat birds anyway, Crickle explained, so you're all perfectly safe. And with that, Henry opened his mouth wide for the birds to take a look inside. Oh, yes, said one. We have a problem here, all right. You haven't been looking after these teeth properly. There are loads of bits of food here and there, still caught between your good teeth. No wonder this one's gone rotten. Henry, with his mouth open so wide, and with his eyes being located on the top of his head, could not see inside his mouth, and so he had not been able to see the leftover food in order to remove it. Until now this had not bothered him, but clearly with his toothache causing so much pain, he saw the need to ensure he kept his teeth clean in future, as he did not want to feel this much pain ever again. Although quite how he was going to manage that, he wasn't sure. Crickle could see Henry was distracted, and so while the birds were keeping him busy and occupied, she slunk down into the water and found herself some strong weeds. She made a loop and then called one of the birds over to her and whispered something. Moments later, the bird flew back to Henry, this time with the reed, and he landed back in Henry's mouth. He hopped out and nodded to Crickle. Crickle knew this was her moment, and she spun herself into a roll in the water. This was a manoeuvre she had been perfecting for hunting, as it enabled her to catch large prey, and so in being ever so clever, she had realised she could also use it here to pull at the reed with great force. Henry had no idea what was happening as he could not see inside his mouth, and so he had not seen the bird pop the reed around his tooth. In being a bird, the oxpecker had managed to drop the reed over so delicately, Henry hadn't felt a thing. Before he knew it, pop! Out popped the rotten tooth, pulled by the force of Crickle's roll in the water. Henry winced, but then felt the immediate rush of relief as the pressure from the rotten tooth was gone. The birds who had been busily clearing all the leftovers from Henry's mouth flew out, sensing Henry wanted to talk. 
Oh, Crickle, thank you, thank you, and you birds, all my mouth, said Henry, his words still muffled by the swelling which was yet to go down. Henry closed his mouth and eyes for a moment to compose himself, and then he took a breath and said, Crickle, oh, you ever so clever, thank you for fixing my tooth. Well, hopefully I've done a little more than just that, she said. You need to keep your teeth clean in future, she continued, and I know just the birds for the job. And Crickle nodded to the oxpeckers. All you have to do is promise you'll never eat them or any of their friends and open your mouth when you see them so they can fly inside and peck off any leftovers. That should keep your teeth clean and prevent this happening again. Oh, oh yes, agreed Henry. I'm very happy with that plan. In fact, I think my whole herd will be. And so it came to be that oxpecker birds agreed to keep hippos' teeth clean, and hippos agreed to let them. They even agreed to let them remove their ticks. And so this is still happening today. If ever you see a hippo, an oxpecker bird won't be far away, and they are often seen cleaning hippos' teeth or perched on their backs, taking off their ticks. Henry was happy as he was no longer in pain, and he had a way to make sure he kept his teeth clean, so he would never have to suffer the pain of a rotten tooth again. And the oxpecker birds were happy, as they had guaranteed food from a whole herd of hippos. Thank you for your help today, Crickle said to the oxpeckers. You are welcome to come and give me a clean and remove my ticks any time you like, she said with a toothy grin. We will, said the oxpeckers, and thank you. What with cleaning Henry's teeth and the teeth of the rest of the herd, we shall never go hungry again. All thanks to Crickle, the crocodile who's ever so clever. And that's the end of tonight's chapter. I hope you enjoyed it. Night night. Keep tight. See you soon.